The Los Angeles metal heroes, Rat, are back and ready to infest the world with their own personal style of rat and roll. The band just released their eighth studio album on Roadrunner Records entitled Infestation, and we've got their new guitarist, Carlos Cavazza, with us. You may have heard of Carlos before. He was in a little band that changed everything in the early 80s called Quiet Riot. You know who I'm talking about. Well, Carlos joins us right here on Inside Heavy to give us the inside scoop on his joining rat in the recording of Infestation. So stay put. We're coming right back with Carlos Cavazzo from Rat. Do you like saving money? Then go to the Inside Heavy Metal Shop where we've compiled a comprehensive list of all your favorite metal artists for the best prices on the internet. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We've got clothing, jewelry, cell phones, and MP3 players. It's the Inside Heavy Metal Shop, powered by Amazon.com. Check it out. We are back with Carlos Cavazzo from Rat, right here on Inside Heavy. We got Carlos Cavazzo on the line with us. He's joined Rat, as you know. Carlos, welcome to Inside Heavy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Tell us what's going on with Rat. You've, you've joined Rat, and you got a new album out. Tell us about Infestation. Uh, well, I joined Rat in uh, July of 08, so I've been in the band for nearly two years now, and... Uh, we started working on the record uh, last year, and um, everybody brought in a few songs, and uh, we compiled the material together to make what we have, and uh, just came out uh, the other day, actually yesterday, mm-hmm. or the day before yesterday, came out on 420, and uh, we're getting ready to tour, tour for that record this year, and you know, work it as good as we can. Fantastic. How do you think it turned out? Oh, I love the record. I, th- I really think that we uh, hit it out of the ballpark with this album. I think uh, it's it's going to stand the test of time. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to write songs that are going to stand the test of time and be heard 20, 25 years from now like our older material is, you know. And uh, we concentrated also on retaining that original rat sound and vibe that they had. And uh, we, we just knew great songs, you know. Absolutely. I've listened to it, and then one thing that stands out right from the get-go, awesome guitar tones. Uh, what did you bring to the table for that? I mean, everybody knows you're a great guitar player, but but uh, and Warren is phenomenal as well. What did you bring to the sound? To the sound? Uh, maybe a little more heavy metal edge. I think uh, uh, since Robin was out of the band, they, they maybe have lost their metal edge that they had. And I, I think maybe that uh, I brought that in. That that seems to be what people are are saying or telling me. So right now, I understand that you actually had to go through a little bit of an audition for Rad. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I did, and, and it's a weird story too because the day I I was there, George Lynch and Zach Wilde were rehearsing in the same building with their bands, mm-hmm. and then they came walking in the studio, and I'm thinking in my mind, oh, these guys auditioning too. I'm never <laughs> gonna get this gig. <laughs> Then uh, uh, George comes up to me and goes, what the hell are you doing here? You know? <laughs> and Zach never said nothing about it. You know, He just you know, was hanging out, talking. He didn't, he didn't think anything about it. It was funny. When you went into audition, what was you prepared to play for? Did you learn some rat songs? Did you have something you was going to do? Uh, yeah, I, I learned a, a bunch of their songs and um, went in there and just you know, did the best I could. I didn't know their songs that well, really. Sure. Uh, took me, they, they do do a lot of songs live, so I had to learn like, you know, 20 songs. <laughs> I wanted to learn real quick. <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, how long ago was that that you had to go through the audition process? It was in, uh, well, I joined the band in July of 08, so I must have, yeah, it was July, August, you know. Sure. Called me in July. Absolutely. Was there anybody else that you knew of that was entertaining the idea of, or did they just, they just want to uh, meet with you just to see if, if you was going to uh, fit in? Um, you know, they, they didn't have other people they were checking out. I'm not even really sure who, mm-hmm. but um, they probably just wanted to see how I play. You know, they hadn't seen me in a long time. They, for all they knew, I could be, you know, 600 pounds or, you know, no hair no more. Who knows what, you know? Sure. <laughs> now, um, 
what what's the lead arrangement with 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 you and Warren? Is it a kind of a KK Downing Glenn Tipton thing, fifty fifty, or or how do you trade off leads? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much a fifty fifty thing. On the older stuff, he does the solos because you know the, that that's the sound that the people remember. So I, it's better that he does them. But the newer material, it's pretty much fifty fifty. Maybe him a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Uh, uh, you know, they, I'm definitely going to be playing more solos, but uh, probably not on the older stuff, though. He needs to do that stuff. Absolutely. Now, you guys come from the same stomping ground in L.A. and and um, enjoyed the same movement. How weird is this for you that now you're in RAT? You know, it is weird. I, I never would have thought this, you know, 25 years ago. And oddly enough, I knew Robin Cross before I knew any of these guys. I used to hang out with him. Mm-hmm. And then I became friends with Steve, and we used to hang out like in '84. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, m- I remember I knew Robin before they even made it. You know, absolutely. Now you know, and uh, so uh, yeah, it was a it was a weird, um, but it, but it almost was like a natural transition because um, you know I was always hoping a band from my same genre of music would would ask me to to, to be with them. You know, and. I got lucky and was one of the best ones of the 80s, you know. Absolutely. And it did seem like a pretty smooth transition to me to go with them. It, it just, uh, I seemed like I fit. I felt like I fit. And uh, me and Warren had worked together over his house a lot before I even started rehearsing with the band. And, uh, you know, worked out a lot of stuff on the guitar. And we, our, our styles are very similar. And <laughs> uh, I felt really comfortable with these guys. I really did. Absolutely. Now, in the, the recording process, you know, as time goes on, does it get easier the, the, to record, or is it, is it, what was there any challenges? I guess as time goes on to recording for an artist. Well, for this situation, it got easier. Um, you know, I've had some pretty hard sessions, obviously with Quiet Riders. You know, we had some tension sometimes in the studio, but you know, everybody knew what we wanted when we went in with this record, and the producer was a, a was a great, you know, Elvis is just an amazing producer, he's, you know, also an amazing friend, he knew exactly what we wanted to do, and uh, he knew how to handle us, and uh, it was very easy, it really was. Uh, for me, I'm on, coming from my side, I thought it, I had no problems at all. And um, a lot of times when me and Warren would do solos, we'd just uh, both tune up and be in the same room together, in the, in the, um, control room, and we just go, why don't you do this one? I'll do this one, you do that one. And then sometimes we'll, we tried something new, doing some harmonies together live, which we were, tr- uh, Warren was trying to bug the producer for a long time to, to get us to try that, but he didn't want to do it, because, uh, just for obviously mixing reasons and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. he ended up, or Warren ended up getting in his way, and we did a couple of harmony things together live, you know. 